Hey guys, good afternoon. Uh, Happy New Year. <laughs> it's 2018, January 3rd. Um, I'm out here on the Tully. Uh, I'll tell you what's been happening with me at the past week, uh, week and a half. Um, I went up to Spring Creek uh, a couple days after Christmas. And uh, actually, I didn't go to Spring Creek first. I went to Bald Eagle Creek. And um, I it was seven degrees. <laughs> really? <laughs> I don't know if that was my coldest, but it, it may have been. Um, fish Bald Eagle for about an, e for about an hour. Um, this was like eight o'clock in the morning. And had one on, got off. And uh, I took the camera up with me, but I didn't really do a video because I didn't have enough uh, good footage. And um, so I fished it for about an hour, had that one on, it got off. And then I went up to Spring Creek. Fished Spring Creek down where the Broken Dam is, below Belfont. Fished about a good hour, nothing. Uh, so I went up to Fisherman's Paradise, went up into the gorge. I fished till about 1.30 in the afternoon. And I picked up four trout, four nice ones though. I like two around 11, one around 13, one around 15. And then I caught two big suckers. Then I left, I had enough. Eyes were freezing up. I just had so much problems with the ice and um, wasn't really getting uh, many hits up there. And uh, so I uh, packed it in and uh, a couple days later, I came down here to the Tully. I uh, came down here with a buddy of mine and um, we fished it, uh, I don't even know, I think we fished it till about, I think, two in the afternoon. And uh, I caught two, he caught one. There, we couldn't buy a hit. And again, it was, I think, in the teens, the temperature was in the teens. And, uh, but that particular day, I'll show you what I got out. I got my six, 11 and a half foot uh, switch rod, but I put on just a small butt right there. And uh, now this is a six weight. And um, what I'm using is a five weight line. Because a six weight has a little bit bigger eyes. And the thinner line gives it a little bit more clearance. And I, I tried an old trick of, they say, the cooking spray. Well, the only cooking spray that I had that was in a spray can was, <laughs> and I don't think this makes any difference, but I, maybe it does. Um, I, I was using extra virgin olive oil. <laughs> I don't know if my rod liked it or not, but I tell you what, I did not have one single solitary problem with, with eyes icing up, and it stayed in the teens all day. Um, even the tip of my eye, very, very little, I mean, tip of my rod, the eye tip, um, had very little problem. So I, if I had to say it worked, I would say it worked. And um, so now maybe also me using one size line thinner uh, with the rod, like I said, I was using the six weight rod with a five weight line uh, that probably helped also but Like I said that particular day we could not buy a hit um, and uh, so uh, I checked the water temps and I think the the flow uh, on that particular day was maybe around 160 and uh, yeah, it was. It went up. It went up uh, for a couple days, then it came back down again. But the temperature, the water, in the previous four days, went down one degree every single day. It went from 40 to 39, 38, 37, 36, and um, that fish. And I should have checked that earlier, and I just didn't. I forgot. The fish just do not get used to that. They will shut down and not feed with one degree in winter time is huge it is just huge especially if it goes down one degree if it goes up one degree oh you can bet uh, they, 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 it helps the fish and starts up their metabolism and they'll start eating again but going down one degrees one degree each day consecutively that's a big time shuts them down that's why the fishing was just so bad um, so now today uh, the air temperature right now is around 21 degrees. It's around 11:30 in the morning, and uh, I checked the water temperature. The water temperature has actually gone up the past couple days from 35.5 degrees up to 37.5 degrees. So that's good. So I'm expecting better things today. I don't think I'm going to make a killing, but um, 
we're gonna try it. I spoke to one fisherman here and he said he was doing good on the midges, uh, midge pupas. And uh, so I'm going to put on today, I'll show you my setup. I'm gonna try the pink glow bug. And I got a pheasant tail right there, okay? And then I'm gonna use a black midge pupa, okay? And we're gonna try that out today. I'm using two split shots, number four split shots. The flow is only, the flow is only 100. So it's slow, but I want that thing bouncing on the bottom. Might get some hookups on the bottom, or I mean snags, but eh, at least I know I'm on the bottom and I'm, I'm presenting it to them nice and slow. So I uh, haven't taken a cast yet, so let's get out there, guys. I'll show you my first couple casts. Okay, here we go. Okay. Mm. 20 degrees. <laughs> That hand's still cold. Okay. I'm down here, 222 bridges. I don't plan on staying here the whole time. I wanna go a little bit downstream, maybe down around the red bridge, but let's see how things work out today here. Okay. Ugh. Let's get out there. First cast of the day. real close to us. Now this is an 11 and a half foot rod, so I got a lot of reach. Just want to go not, not out that far. I'm only a little bit out further than my rod tip. I want to check. I feel like I'm dragging on bottom, and I was dragging on bottom with the uh, pheasant tail. Pheasant tail, all the flies got junk on them. Let me clean them all. So I might be dragging too much, I don't know. Still gonna keep on the two split shots first. Get all this junk off my flies. Hey guys, I took a few steps upstream, cast up in the shallower water and picked up this boy here. Okay, I don't know what he's on yet. Ah, he's on the pink glow bug. You guys see me use the yellow glove most of the time, but I'm telling you, I catch a lot of fish on the pink too. Okay, so let me get this guy in here. There it goes. Nice uh, rainbow. <laughs> hmm. I'm all tangled up. Get this guy up here. Up oh, there he goes. Okay, there he is. Hey guys, I had to take a break and go up back up to my truck and get my um hand warmers I put inside my mitts. So I came back to my starting point right here in front of the rock. And I picked up another one here. And this one is on the black Mitch Pupa. Okay. So, there's two rainbows here. Uh oh. Huh? Oh. Uh oh. I'll show you the back black Mitch Pupa. It's the one that we made the other day in my tying video, okay? Okay guys, picked up another one in this deep hole here, <laughs> probably about 40, 40 yards down from the bridge. Okay, got this one on the pheasant tail, so I caught one, whoop, there he goes, that's okay. Caught one on every fly, one on the pink glow bug, one on the midge pupa, and one on the pheasant tail. Try to keep this on for you for a few minutes. See if I can get one on film for you. Well, that wasn't bad. I 
been here probably about 40 minutes. Oh, there's another one? I don't know. Oh yeah, got another one. Look at that. Another one. There you go. Oh, got off. Ha! Nah. <laughs> he was... I didn't know I had him because he was swimming into me. So there you go. There's the fourth one. And that one looked like it was on the midge pupa. And clean off my flies here. I think there might be junk on them. Uh, no, there's not. Not really. Okay. I do this haul I usually do better on the far side but these last two I caught right in the middle actually actually I might put another split shot on to get down a little deeper it looks like it's a good maybe four foot deep here so I want that thing on the bottom Okay, let me put another split shot on. Okay, guys. I put my third number four split shot on. And, uh, get this thing definitely on the bottom. Couple good drifts, nice slow deep drifts. A nice uh, uh, it's a nice steady current right here in the middle then over near that rock off coming off that rock is a nice it's a faster current so I'll put it right on the edge of that faster current Well, the tap air. I don't know what that was. Now I'm only out about my rod length now. Oh, there he goes. Look at that. Got him on the swing. Got him on the swing. There you go. That's three out of this hole right here. And that is on the pheasant tail, okay? And 
that. The one that got off earlier, I don't know what it was, but all four of these that I landed are all rainbows. Were they? I think maybe one was a brownie, I can't remember. <laughs> oh well. deep hole got three split shots on again and I picked up this is the sixth fish of the day and that is on the pheasant tail there's a brownie there you go okay got three split shots on there see nice brownie 11 12 inches okay Okay, guys, I got down here to my hole out there with the uh, log and tree in the water, and um, it's a 140. So I fished roughly about two hours. We picked up six fish, and um, I can't say that that's bad. That's pretty good. Way better than I did. <laughs> Way better than I did uh, a week ago. So. Um, uh, you know, the, still the hits are not, um, they're softer. Maybe they feel softer because I got the switch rod and it's really got a lot of, it's like a medium action, soft medium action. Um, so, I mean, I normally, my uh, 10 foot 4 and 10 foot 5 are both fast action rods. And uh, so it just feels like real soft hits. And um, so, and that's probably typical of, cold winter fishing um, so uh, I'm gonna actually go above the bridge work my way up to the bend if you guys know the Tully you know exactly where I'm talking about and um, and then eh, depending on what time I get done there I think that might only take me about an hour and um, we'll go down hopefully I'll have time to go down to the Red Ridge area okay and I'll be able to show you, hopefully, some hookups down there. So, stay with me, guys. Okay, guys. Got one here on the pink glow bug. I actually put my indicator back on. It was so slow here, this current. And like I said, I don't know if I said in other videos, but somehow I can... <laughs> when it's super slow, current, I can tell the hits better. So... Got one here, rainbow on the pink glow bug. Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. Okay. Okay, guys. I'm gonna fish up here, take a few casts. Um, that to adjust my indicator guys you know what it takes work <laughs> and patience but now I'm getting into deeper water you know you really have to adjust your indicator and and add and take away split shots and um, the different water depths you're fishing and um, right now I gotta add a split shot and I gotta adjust my indicator because I'm in deeper water and um, hey, if you don't do the right things your odds go down and I gotta practice what I preach even though it's freezing cold out. But really that's what you gotta do. So I put another split shot on right now and 
gonna move that indicator up about another foot and a half actually that slid all the way down okay and I got another knot up there so My thumb and my forefinger are numb, <laughs> so hard to feel that stuff. Put my hands in my mittens, even though that's difficult to work with the line. So let's get up there and go after, get the right setup. In that slow water down below where I caught the one rainbow only had one split shot but this is moving a little bit a little bit better here he goes look at that you had the right setup and you catch a fish <laughs> it's a nice rainbow this one's a good 13 inches maybe 14 and he's on the pink glow bug thank god I got that on film I want to make sure that I had the camera on. Look at that nice, look at that big nice streak down his belly. Oh, look at that. Good, good 14 inches. Nice boy. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> so I said, I had to practice what I preach. Second cast in there, boom. Well, let's see if it still works. Go up there. See if I can hook on to another one. Look at that. Two cast, two fish. Oh, he got off. <laughs> two cast, two fish. Okay. Nuts, he got off. <laughs> okay, let's try it again. Third cast. There you go. Oh, I don't know what that was. Maybe a snag, I don't know. But you guys see, I think that's my third fish on the pink glow bug. Um, you know, I can't say the pink. I fish with the yellow more than the pink, but eh, can't say the one color is better than the other. When I fish with the pink, I catch fish on that too. And it serves the same purpose as far as using it as a tractor. There he goes, another one. But that one is on the pheasant tail. So we're doing good here now. Okay. We're doing good here. This is number nine. Number nine. Okay. This, a, uh, this one's a brownie. Nice shiny brownie. Still got you on. <laughs> Get up there. We'll try it again. Oh, oh God! Missed him. <laughs> he yanked that under. Oh, what's up with this little hole here? This isn't a big hole at all. He must be sitting on the bottom. Let me uh, get the tail end of this pool. See if I can get a good drift on it up against that tree. Oh, there he goes. Look at that. 
right up against the tree. Oh, this is a nice one. Oh my god, this is awesome now. This is on the pheasant tail again. This is on the pheasant tail. Nice. Another beautiful rainbow, nice red streak down the side of it. Nice fish. Wow, wait. This one is easy. 14. Might even go 15. Look at that red streak. Gorgeous. Oh, big fish. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Wow, wait. Okay guys, I'm up here even with this branch and this rock here, and it's pretty shallow here. And like I said, I've got to practice what I preach. I don't need two split shots here, I only need one. So I'm gonna take one of these split shots back off again. Okay, and clean off my glow bug again. That scum on it. All day long cleaning off the scum. Actually, it's on all my flies. Okay, so fish up here, a lot of them I catch right along, not, not out, not out far, and uh, so I'm going to throw up right up here first. There he goes. There he goes. There he goes. Oh man, nice fish again. Nice fish again. Come on, come on. Looks like it's a rainbow, pretty shiny. Okay. And this, I think he's on the pink glow bug. No, he's not. He is on the pheasant tail. <laughs> it's not a rainbow, just a shiny brownie. <laughs> Did I get that all wrong or what? <laughs> okay, nice fish though. Good 12, 13 inches. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh. Fishing far oop, near that bank bring this one in close man those boys aren't jogging they're running <laughs> I jog I jog every other day like uh, I don't know two to three miles every every other day but those boys were running <laughs> I couldn't do that not now That's more of my speed right there. <laughs> nah. I jog pretty good. I usually do a 5K between... Eh, 22 minutes was my best, but I'm usually around 23, 24 minutes of 5K. Um, oh yeah, 5K. My dog motivates me. I always bring my dog out with me. Beginning of the run, he's in front of me. 
by the end of the run, he's 50 yards behind me. <laughs> See, something's on there. Something's on there. <laughs> Feels like a sucker, though. Boy, it took it real slow. I don't know what it is. It sure seems to me fighting like a sucker. I don't know. And this is on. Oh, it's a trout. <laughs> nice brownie. On the uh Nice brownie on the pheasant tail. Oh, the pheasant tail's coming back. That's a pretty brownie. There you go. Pretty brownie. Oh, well. Boop, boop. And everything today, snags, fish, Came right out though. There you go. No junk on the fly. Let's do a close one here. Don't want to disturb that area over there if I. Oh, there he goes. 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 Nice, nice, nice. What's this one on? Oh, a rainbow. On the pink glow bug. There you go. Nice rainbow. Nice rainbows. Man, these rainbows are fat. Big and fat. Look at that. Well, he's only about 12 inches, but he's wide. Um. guys that wasn't bad I don't think I fished maybe a little over an hour and um, we were uh, uh, let me see get my get my phone out let's see what time we got here 247 look at that <laughs> I stopped fishing at 140 probably took me about seven eight minutes to walk up here and um, 2.47, so it was an hour. So the first two hours we caught like six. The next hour we caught six more, but in half the time. <laughs> okay. Now, um, like I said, I'm gonna go down to the uh, Red Bridge area. Sorry, I'm getting my phone situated here. And uh, we're going to go down to the Red Bridge area and I'm going to fish almost right underneath the Red Bridge. See how we do there. That sometimes is pretty good right, th right underneath the bridge. And, um, okay. So, hang with me. Probably be down there in about 10-15 minutes. Okay. Here we go. Okay, guys. <laughs> I'm inside the Red Bridge. Covered bridge. Walking across. Now, if my thermometer in my truck is correct, it says that the temperature actually went down. I started, it was 21 degrees. Now it's saying it's 18, but the sun's out. So, I don't know about that. I only had to drive like a half a mile or a mile down to the Red, red Bridge. And, uh, I don't know if the uh, truck thermometer was that accurate, but... I, So, we're going to focus on this riff up here, okay, and um, last time I fished this about two, maybe three weeks ago, I caught four of them here, and um, one of them was, uh, you know, a Palomino trout. 
about 11 inches and um, that was a surprise I don't know if he's still here probably is still Ooh, ice <laughs> okay so well, that fish I fished it last time down at the covered bridge all the way up to the riff I had two hits in the middle but the four I caught were all up at the head so I'm just going to start up at the head and uh, see how it goes and this will be my last spot this will be my last spot. Get home and uh, load this stuff into the computer and hopefully I can get this video out to you till tomorrow. Today is the 3rd, so I hope to get it out to you by the 4th. Don't know if I can. Uh, I've got some things to do and if not, maybe the 5th then. If I, can't, if I can't get it out to you tomorrow on the 4th. This is about where I was. So let's get over here and get into some fish. Let's get into some fish. There he goes, there he goes. Boy, I think he that fish just obeyed me. <laughs> and that is on the black midge grouper. I'm telling you, that fish just obeyed me. <laughs> That's a big rainbow. That's a real big rainbow. That's a real big rainbow. Nice fish. Oh, there he goes. He was, boy, he was 14, 15 inches. Nice. Gorgeous. That was fun. Okay. Okay, guys. That's it for me. <laughs> that was, um, not going to call it bitter cold winter fishing, but, um, it was pretty cold, though. Started out at 21. Um, thermometer in my truck says 18 now. Um, advice I can give you when you're doing this kind of winter fishing is make sure you dress warm first. I don't have my face mask on. I really didn't need it today because there's absolutely no wind. That was the best thing about the whole day today. Even right now, not a single, nothing. No, no wind at all. So. I'm going to make sure you layer, and I'm using hand warmers in my mittens up here, up on top, and then I got the toe warmers uh, down in my feet. Um, I use a polypropylene sock first, and then I put an insulated sock. If you can go one or even two sizes higher in your boot, that's what I recommend. I actually have to get a new pair of boots, and I think I might get for wintertime fishing, I usually take a nine and a half, ten, and I might get a size 12 because the best, absolute best insulator is air. If you can wiggle your feet and you got air in there, air is your best insulator. Um, as long as you're not stumbling over the boot, and I know for me, I won't be. But I have 11, these are 11s. I usually always buy 11s, but man, with an insulated sock, it's just, it's pretty tight in there. And, um, so I'd like to try 12s next year. Maybe I'll get two pair. I'll get an 11 and a 12 and uh, save the 12s for uh, winter fishing. And um, uh, watch those water temperatures. If the temps go down, I probably wouldn't go out. If the temps remain the same, this is the water temps remain the same um, for at least three, four days. You might have some decent fishing like we uh, well today was different today the temps went up so uh it went up two degrees today so that was that was pretty cool um and sometimes winter fishing a half a degree is a huge deal so pay attention to those water temps and also the air temps at least for your comfort um what else i told you today this is my uh this is a uh, LL Bean Silver Ghost. I'll show it to you here. LL Bean Silver, Silver Ghost 11. Oh, this is 11 foot. I thought it was 11 and a half. Huh. 
we got, excuse me, I apologize. 11 foot six weight um, switch rod. And I have the, uh, the small butt on here. They twist off and on. Um, I mainly bought this for the river fishing for uh, smallmouth. Man, I, I can, ow. I don't truly do a spade cast, but boy, I can roll cast a country mile with this thing with even a big clouds or minnow on it uh, for smallmouth. And uh, so that's really what I bought it for. But, um, you know, I did use it a couple times for trout in the years past, and it really came in handy the last two times I went out. Because so I'm only using a five weight line, and, you know, each, uh, each time you go up a. Uh, size in the rod the, eye, the guide's eyes are a little bit bigger so I went with the smaller line bigger eyes to give me more clearance I sprayed my eyes down with the um, extra virgin olive oil it worked excellent you can see right now there's barely anything on my um, eyes so that wasn't an issue at all today uh, and uh, you know uh, typically they say afternoon fishing in the winter is better because the water temps may heat up in another half a degree or degree and that seemed to be true for us today you know once we got above the uh, 222 bridge the fishing was a little bit better even down here we caught that one and um so uh fish are still hungry in the winter okay fish still have to eat in the winter okay trout do so i but you have to fish under the right conditions and um, hopefully you can catch a few instead of sitting at home being bored. If you want to brave it, <laughs> because it is um, challenging. You do have to put up with the colder temps. Um, I, nobody wants to fall in in this water because this is ice cold water. So uh, you take extra care when you're waiting. Make sure for a lot of guys. I don't usually use a waiting staff. I mean, I'm sure there's going to come a day when I should use it or will use it i do have a waiting staff and i'll use it on certain rivers the lehigh the never sink definitely out in new york um the delaware even um but and even the little J. sometimes the little J is super dangerous but um for the most part i don't usually use especially in the tully the tully i don't need a waiting staff i uh um but uh so I hope you guys like this video and um, I just wanted to show you, you know, even in this bitter cold um, or this, you know, we're fishing in the teens and, uh, you know, you can still have some decent fishing in the wintertime, okay? Okay, guys, thank you very much. God bless you.